this is Timotheus. In this video and the next, I'll be discussing the Companions of Saint Nicholas. In North America, Santa Claus is assisted by the benign Christmas elves, but in much of Europe, his helpers are a little bit more fear-inducing. But before we talk about the helpers themselves, let's back up and look at the environment that gave birth to them. Traditionally, there wasn't much agricultural activity during the winter months in Europe, so as a result, people had a lot of free time on their hands to tell each other stories and contribute to folklore. Generally speaking, most of European folklore that's associated with the period between the end of October and the beginning of January belongs to one of the following categories. On the one hand, people try to kill time during this gloomy period by drinking, playing games and exchanging gifts. Let's call it cheerful winter celebration. On the other hand, People were inspired by the gloomy landscape and atmosphere to scare each other, remember the dead, and stuff like that. Let's call this category macabre winter celebration. The act of dressing up or guising is something that's commonly seen in traditions of both categories of winter celebration. In many European countries, especially those that used to be part of the Holy Roman Empire, cheerful winter celebration and macabre winter celebration come together in the folklore of Saint Nicholas and his scary companion. The Alpine regions are without a doubt home to the scariest companion of Saint Nicholas, Campus, a hairy monster with goat horns. He's typically depicted in chains wielding a birch rod. On his back, he carries a basket in which he puts presents or naughty children. In some parts of Europe, an angel joins the duo. In Protestant areas, this angel is typically interpreted as baby Jesus, even though a young girl often plays the role. In certain places, she may replace Krampus, appear with another helper, or even alone. In many different regions, a man with a hood or a hat and a long beard assists Saint Nicholas. He carries the same attributes as Krampus. In Germany, he has many names, but the most famous one is Knecht Ruprecht. In the northern part of France, he goes by the name Père Fouettard. The same name may be used in the east of the country, but in the areas that used to be a part of Germany, he is known as Hans Trapp. In Luxembourg, his name is Heusica. And in Switzerland, it's Schmutzli. Both the bearded companions and the horned companions are often portrayed with a black face. And that's the trait that's become the most notable feature in Saint Nicholas's companion in the Netherlands and Belgium. In the Dutch speaking areas, he's referred to as Zwarte Piet, and in the French speaking south of Belgium, he has a similar appearance. But it's referred to as Père Fouettard as well, or sometimes Hans Kouf. Before the duo of Saint Nicholas and Zwarte Piet became the standard, several similar traditions of boogeyman gift bringers existed alongside each other. As it was key to become unrecognizable, masks were often used. If none were available, the face was often blackened with charcoal instead. In some areas, Saint Nicholas himself was even black. There are records of Saint Nicholas being referred to as Zwarte Klaas. Traditionally, 
Zwarte Piet also carried a birch rod and chains, but as his character has moved away from the aggressive boogeyman, the chain and birch rod are almost always absent these days. In recent years, there's been much debate revolving around Zwarte Piet, as his appearance is perceived to be offensive to people with African roots by some. But more about that in part 2. If you enjoyed this first part, please help me out by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing. If I forgot to mention the Companion of St. Nicholas in your area, let me know in the comment section. If you'd like to check out my sources, have a look at my blog post. All the links and credits are in the description of this video. This was Timotheus. Thanks for watching.